Hi folks, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to customize your forms in QuickBooks Online. I'm also gonna show you how to create multiple form templates, such as invoice templates. So you could potentially send one form to one group of clients for one thing and a different form for a different group of clients for another thing. I'm even gonna show you how to have different logos on the different forms. However, if you have QuickBooks Simple Start or Essentials, your experience is gonna be a little bit different than if you have QuickBooks Online Plus or Advanced because uh, Plus or Advanced allows you to manage multiple locations with multiple company names per se or multiple uh, DBAs or fictitious names where with uh, Simple Start Essentials you can't. I'll, I'll explain that when we get there. You'll make a lot of sense. Let's jump right in. So I'm looking at QuickBooks Online at the moment and I have a company called Handmade Purses. When I go create an invoice, I'm gonna go to New and then go to Invoice. Then I'm gonna go through the process of creating the invoice like normal. So I'm gonna select my customer. I'm gonna select my product or service and then select the quantity and then my invoice is ready. If I wanna see what that invoice is gonna look like when I print it or email it, I'm gonna click on the bottom, all the way in the bottom where it says Print or Preview and then I click on the Print or Preview button. Once I click on Print or Preview, you're gonna see the PDF version of this. This is the default template. You're gonna see name and address on the left-hand side with your email and um, website, that sort of thing. Logo on the right-hand side. This is sort of a, a blue shade. I'm gonna show you how to edit that and how to change that. So let's go ahead and close out of that. I'm gonna X out and then I'm gonna click on the gear menu on the top right and then I'm gonna click on custom form styles. Right now, the only custom form style you're gonna see is standard. This is the default one that gets created when you set up QuickBooks for the first time. I'm gonna click on edit on the right where it says action. And then in here is where I get to play with it. I can click on make logo edits. And if I don't have a logo there already, I just click on the plus sign there on that box. And I click on plus and I go search for the logo somewhere in my computer, select it, click open and upload it into QuickBooks. Then select the logo, click save, and that will place the logo in there. Now I could also choose uh, how I want that logo set up. So if I wanted a small, medium, or large, you got those options there. I can also hide it so I can have it uploaded but not show it on the invoices. And then I can choose whether I wanna put it on the left, center, or in the right. So I got total control over that. Let's say I wanna change the overall color. So I click on try a different color, Let's make this one maybe like a gray or a black, so I get to choose what that looks like. I have a little bit of flexibility with the font style and the font type, and that's really the most you can do on this front. I can click on content, and then click on any of the three areas, the header, the body, or the footer, and then choose how to customize those parts. So for example, if I click anywhere in the header, click on that, I can change the name of the business here. Now note, if I change the name of the business, um, it will essentially change the name of the business in the entire company file. If you do wanna have multiple business names in multiple templates, you have to turn on location tracking, and this is what it says up here. So I'll discuss that in a little bit. For now, let's just talk about what the experience looks like when you don't have plus or advanced and you don't have that location tracking option. So you get to choose the company name there, and as well, remember that if you change the company name there, it changes it throughout the entire company file. Then we got the phone number, the email, the address. This is where I get to choose the website. I can choose everything that I want to see there. I can customize there where it says invoice. I can say your bill. I can call it invoice. Invoice is a default. You can call it whatever you want. And then there's some other boxes here you can turn off and on in there. There are There's the ability to add custom fields, even with drop-down custom fields, but that's only available in the advanced edition of uh, QuickBooks Online. So we won't cover that in this video. We'll have other videos talking about custom fields and custom drop-down fields, that sort of thing. Then here it says emails. This is where you can customize what the email will look like. So I get to choose, here it says full details, whether I wanna see the actual item name and description and all that stuff inside of the body of the email in itself, or I can just click on summarized if I don't want the details. And I can choose whether or not I wanna attach a PDF into the email I strongly always recommend to attach a PDF because your customer on the other side is gonna wanna save it or, or print it or whatever. Then I get to choose what the template looks like, uh, the subject line, the body of the email. There's also a reminder version of the email. This is when you 
remind people that they haven't paid you, which is different than the initial email where you send the invoice. So you get to customize that stuff in there. And that's really, in a nutshell, that's really all you can do. But let's talk about creating a separate template, another template in which I could presumably have a different logo, for example. So I'm going to click up here where it says new style, and I'm going to do a new style for an invoice that allows me to create a new template. This one is, let's say, for my cake pop business. So I'll type here, uh, cake pop template. Then I come up here where it says um, change up theme, so I can change the theme altogether. There's a couple of themes there, not that many options. You can just kind of toggle through them and see the different options. I'm going to choose this one because that's kind of the most obviously different than the other one. I'm going to click here, it says make logo edits, and I'll make this logo on the left-hand side. And I'm also going to change the logo and put a different logo I have in my computer that is for my cake pops business. And I'm going to click on save. Now, the problem, as I mentioned earlier, is that if I change the company name here, it will change it throughout the entire QuickBooks file. That's going to be a problem. And that's a limitation with QuickBooks Online, Simple Start and Essentials. So we'll discuss in a little bit uh, going into plus or advanced to turn on locations and talking about having multiple business names inside of the same QuickBooks file. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into content and I'm just simply going to remove the business name and maybe remove the email or or the website or whatever is it that is identifying to the other type of business or the other side of the business that I have. And I'm hoping that the logo contains the information that I want my customer to see. In worst case scenario, if you're working with essentials or simple start and you can't have this multiple location feature, you might want to redesign that image of your logo to contain the information you want the customer to see. Not the greatest thing to do, but it is the option that's available. Okay, so then I'm going to click on done. And now I have my second template. So I have my standard template for my handmade purses business. And I have my K-pop template for my K-pop uh, type business. So let's go back into my invoice. I'm going to click on new here and invoice. And then I'm going to click on the history button here so I can see the recent invoices and I'm going to open up that same invoice we were working on just now. Just as a quick reminder, let's do a print preview so we can see what that looks like. Click on print preview and now you get to see what that template looks like. That's the same template that we just uh, we were playing with earlier. So I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to switch and have this invoice with the same information that's in there use a different template again for emailing and printing. So I'm going to click here it says customize in the bottom of the screen, and then I can switch it from standard to K-pop template. So once I make the switch, now I can click on print or preview, and I can see what that looks like. And it's the exact same invoice with the same contents, same product, same price, same everything, invoice number, date, all that stuff is the same, but now you're gonna see um, the new logo in there, and we remove the company name and that sort of thing. So that's how you get the option to create multiple templates with simple start or essentials. That's it. That's the limits that it has. You can have unlimited templates in there. You're going to have to let the logo do most of the speaking when it comes to like company name or fictitious names or that sort of thing. So let's get out of that. Now let's talk about turning on locations. So I'm going to click on the gear menu on the top right. And then I'm going to go into um, account and settings and I'm going to switch my account to plus. I'm going to click here on billing and subscriptions and I'm going to make sure that I am on plus now. So this is through by clicking on upgrade plan or downgrade plan and you get to choose which version you're in. So as long as I am on plus and I am on plus now, I can now turn on a feature called locations. So I'm going to go into the advanced tab. Then I'm going to go down to where it says track locations, turn on locations. You can turn them off and on here. You can even change whether location is called something else. So I can use a term like territory or business or department or whatever, and I get to choose what that's going to be for. So let's just call this business instead of location, just so we can um, play with that concept that we have two businesses inside of one entity. Let me just click on save here. And then once you see that turned on, I'm going to go to done, and now I'm going to create the locations. So I'm going to click on the gear menu over here, and then click on all lists. That will take me to the settings of all my list. I'm going to go down to my locations, which is now called businesses. Click on that, and I'll be able to create my multiple locations. So I'm going to click on new, and then I'm going to create my default location. And my default location was handmade purses. So I'm going to go here, 
and type hand made purses. That's my default location that's containing all the default information that's already in my QuickBooks file. So I'm good with that. I'll click on save. So that's location one. Then I'm gonna click on new and then create location two, which is cake pops, right? So we're gonna do cake pops. And then in here, I'm gonna select this business as a different title on sales forms. So in here, I'm gonna put cake pops Boston or whatever, whatever my company name. Then is, it, is there a different company name communicating to customers? Yes, I'm gonna put that in as well. So the templates and everything contain sort of a different company name. Does it have a different address? Let's say the address is the same. Uh, different emails, yes. Let's say this is Hector at cakepops.com. And is there a different phone number? Yes, we'll put here um, 954-777-5585, whatever it is. And then I'm gonna click on save. So now the second location contains sort of alternate information to that. So let's see how that works. Let's see how that functions. Let me go back now into my invoices. Now that I have my multiple locations, I'm going to look at my recent invoices, look at customer ABC. So right now I don't have any business or location selected at the moment. Let's click on print preview just to see what we have now. This is now showing the cake pop information. Good. Let's switch that. I'm going to just click on customize, put it back into standard and then click on print preview. Take a look at that, and now we get to see our standard information with our standard company name and um, and email and address and all that stuff. So that's good. That that part is the sort of the core business that one is being set up. Now let's go ahead and click on customize. Let's change it to the cake pop template, and I want to go back and click on edit current style so I can uh, go and edit it. So now that I'm using this template, I can now go in here click on uh, not make logo edits to content and then click on the header. And then in here, I'm going to click on business name, phone number, email, address. I'm going to enable all this and website. I'm going to enable this, but I'm not going to change it in here. I'm going to leave what's in there because that's a default information. I'm going to trust that my locations are going to work correctly. So don't worry about that. No need to change it here. That's my core or my default template name. Leave that in there. Then I'm gonna click on done, okay? So right now, I, I've changed that. When I click on print preview, I'm gonna go in there and I'm going to see the wrong information. Right now, it's gonna be the wrong information. Actually, whoops, let me get out of that. Let me change the template to the cake pop template. That's the one we wanted to see. And then do the print preview. And there it is, this is showing handmade purses. It's showing the wrong information. That's fine, okay? That's like that because we haven't selected the location or the business yet. So I'm gonna X out of that. Then up here on the right, it says business. This is where I click on my drop down menu and I click on handmade purses. Now, it won't by default choose the handmade purse, uh, I mean, sorry, not handmade purses, uh, the cake pop one. So it will not by default link a template with the location. That's not available yet. You still have to make the switch of uh, and customize the templates based on the customer or the deal that you're doing. That's still kind of a nuance that you have to deal with. So you have to, every time you do an invoice, you gotta cho choose which is the um, which is the template you wanna use. Of course, make a default to the one you're gonna use the most. But even though I, uh, before the wrong address was showing, because I changed the business uh, category here, I'm gonna save it. Now I'm gonna click on print preview. And then you're gonna see that uh, this is now gonna change the company name because this the information is now uh, driven by the location. So if you turn on locations, which again, you need QuickBooks Online Plus or Advanced for that, then you'll be able to also be able to have a different business name and address and phone number and all and all that stuff. If you need to have on top of just the different logos, have that. So you have to remember you got to be on Plus or Advanced for that. So one more thing that's worth looking at here in the gear menu in the top, you get to make sort of quick changes to what this is going to look like without having to change the template. So when we went earlier, that's for us to change the entire template. But in here, you can individually change some of the things uh, that you're seeing on the invoice without having to go and change the template. So even though these things, these fields here in the header and the fields in the columns or in the content, that also can be changed in the styles menu. You can also make some quick changes in here 
and choose which fields you want to see or not see in your template. So something else worth looking at when it comes to customizing your forms. Anyway, I hope you like this video. And if you are going to sign up for QuickBooks Online for the first time after watching this video, make sure to use the link that is in the description so you get a discount for the first 12 months of your subscription. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.